Abraven look for a ray of sunshine as they start to rebuild without Giles. Yes, the prospect of an Abraven team without Ray Giles may seem to spectators and viewers something like Christmas without mince pies, considering the important contribution he's made to the Abraven team over the years. In fact, it seems so often that if Abraven were to do well, then Ray Giles himself had to do well. Well, team manager John Richardson has decided that that, in fact, is the root cause of Abraven's problem, that Ray Giles' individual style doesn't fit into the sort of rebuilding program he envisages. Well, his ideas will stand a searching test today against a Pontypool team who just go marching on. Still just one defeat this season. Gerald, what are your thoughts on that Ray Giles decision? It seems very odd to me that uh, Ray Giles should have changed clubs and it's very strange to think of him playing in colours other than Aberavon. He's been such an influential player over the years here in Aberavon and played his career almost in its entirety here uh, in Aberavon. And so they say it'll be a testing time for Aberavon. It'll be a testing time too for John Richardson, I think, because it seems fashionable these days that clubs should have managers in charge of them and he's intent on changing the philosophy and perhaps the attitude here in Aberavon. As I say, Pontypool too just go marching on, don't they? Well, yes, they do, and there is a certain familiarity about the team now, whereas you look at Abarav and perhaps with some new faces coming in, uh, uh, Pontypool, having rebuilt over the last couple of years, as I say, this season, they're beginning to look very familiar indeed, the familiar faces there uh, in the team. Let's look, first of all, in a bit more detail then at the Abaravan team. Well, uh, we don't know yet how they're going to play uh, for the rest of the season, but if they are establishing a new attitude, uh, this is something that doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen from one week uh, to the next. It takes some time to establish a new pattern, a new platform for their play. Uh, but uh, very interestingly, to find that at Scrum Half, instead of Ray, Ray Giles, now that they've got Anthony Jones there, brother of Robert Jones. A key man for them at outside half today, I'm sure, will be Mike Lewis. He's been a key character over the years. With a man like Giles inside him, certainly he has been very influential indeed. Here we see him on a couple of occasions here, showing his kicking uh, skills uh, to great effect. But he's also a fine runner when the occasion arises. A uh, place kicker too, a man who has contributed a large number of points to Aberavon. He did have a, a season or so away from Aberavon when he went to Italy, but now that he's back, he's very firmly in control. Mike Lewis, a prodigious point scorer. In 205 games for Aberavon, he's totaled 1,430 points. And this season, he scored 184 points. Let's move on then to the Pontypool team. Yes, well, when we tend to look at uh, Pontypool, we look at the familiarity of that back row with Hewish and uh, Brown and Carter there, and then Jackass and Goody in the middle. <laughs> But uh, we always tended to emphasize, of course, the effectiveness of their halfbacks, Bishop and Ring. But what we tend to forget, I think, is the influence of Paul Rees at uh, fullback. We always say this season so far that Pontypool have changed their pattern because of Ring. But I think uh, Rees, too, has contributed substantially, as we can see here now. Lovely ball, lovely movement. But look at him coming in from, as I've said before, from a deep position to go through the Trinetti defense. And uh, typical of uh, Pontypool, then once they get that kind of initiative, all the forwards are there in numbers and they don't lose any chances with the opportunities arise in that way and here's another opportunity again of seeing Paul Rees coming through the middle not quite with the same success this time but with the same effectiveness Paul Rees played also of course for Cardiff Newport and Ebo Vale and a Wales B international two seasons 1984 as a replacement and also 1985 and this afternoon's referee Mr Derek Bevan from Cladach of course member of the international panel from Wales so it's Mark Ring then gets the game underway for Pontypool. Jack S5 was going up there, moved into the second row today in the absence of Hayden Morton. And we'll get the first line out of the game and we'll see if Frank Jack S5 there can get some possession here possibly. Pontypool, of course, beat Pontypool in midweek by 23 points to 18 to make it their 18th success of the season out of 19 games. It's Billy James though for Aberavon into this line out. Williams back to Jones and to Lewis. Paul Rees immediately under that ball, flinging out a dangerous one, a long one, but Bishop takes it. Out to Hansen then on the left wing. Trying to get round Andrew Jones. Hansen, the ball back inside, not going to hand though. O'Callaghan eight down there for Aberavon as in drive for the ball. But Aberavon going in over the top. So a penalty then to Pontypool and the first chance of this game surely for Mark Ring. Ring going for the posts on the favoured left-hand side of the field for the right-footed kicker, so a good chance then for Ring. 
Marking 230 points already this season for Pontypool, but on that occasion dragging it wide of the posts. Steve Jones then waiting for instructions before putting in again towards Goody. Pontypool though, infringing at that line out. Jackers again it looked like, so a penalty then to Aberavon and the first chance of this game for Mike Lewis. Good still day this four place kickers and this kick well within Mike Lewis's range Lewis again approaching the 200 point mark 184 points so far this season looking now then to put his side in the lead that's a good-looking kick so fine kick then by the Aberavon outside half has given his side a three-point lead Steve Jones going towards Jackers, and the ball finally does come back on the Pontypool side as they now try to set up this platform. Back then to Bishop. Putting up again that typical little kick of his. Wilkins underneath it. Under pressure, though, from Glasson. Who is in there? And now Pontypool look to get the ball back. They do indeed to ring. He can launch something from here. The long pass. Taken by Oral, but under pressure. But in fact, Aberavon up offside. So a penalty then to Pontypool in a very kickable position indeed. Mark Ring just for the moment dummying the run before finally opting for the kick at goal. And that's the position, quite a straightforward one, isn't it? Here's the view then from behind the posts as Mark Ring tries to add to his 230 points for the season, which he does successfully. And Mark Ring brings the sides level at three all. Steve Jones going for Jackers again in the middle, but he was impeded there by his opposite member, Mark Watts. So the penalty then goes to the visitors. And chance number four of this game, yes, indeed, for Mark Ring. As he finally tells referee Bevan that he's opting to go for the posts. Quite a similar position, this to one he missed a few minutes ago. Ring coming up then to take it quickly. Here's the view from behind the post as he tries to drift that one in. And that's a beautiful kick. So Mark Ring then has put Ponapool back in the lead by six points to three. Mike Lewis's kick taken there by Jackers, but not cleanly. This time it's Ponapool who are judged to have gone in killing that ball. So another penalty then and another chance for Mike Lewis, this time to draw Aberavon level. So again, then the view from behind the posts. Mike Lewis, 187 points so far this season for Aberavon, trying to make it 190. And he does so quite successfully. So then the sides level once more. Thanks to that penalty by Mike Lewis at 6 all. Mark Ring drilling that kick deep. They are down towards Anthony Jones, who transfers to his half-back partner, Mike Lewis. And that's a fine kick by the Aberavon outside half, taking his side almost up to halfway. So Steve Jones then with Goody standing at two in the line-out. It goes towards Goody, in fact, but that is won by Aberavon. Jones under pressure from Hirsch. Gets aid, though, from Gerald Williams into O'Callaghan. But the ball going loose and, in fact, going forward. So referee Bevan has given the scrum to Pontypool right on halfway. So 
So let's see if Hollapool will have an attacking move up their sleeve here. Right on halfway. Good strike once again by Steve Jones. Carter with the ball at his feet, allowing it to go out. It goes to ring. Reese up from fullback. And out to Glasson. First chance for him to really show his paces. Reese again in support. Fine play here by the Ponapool fullback. As Ponapool now look then for second phase possession. Here it comes for them, in fact. Bishop to ring. Going for the gap. Half gap himself. Getting aid, in fact, from Mark Brown here. Brown in turn getting support from Oral. The pass out to Hansen. Hansen to Oral. And he's over in the corner. Good try then. By Keith Orrell, his eighth try of the season in just 11 appearances. So, good play here by Pontypool, then getting the first try on the board. First of all, it was Ring, looking as if he was going for the half gap before transferring the ball. There in support was Mark Ring, and a good, strong, pacey run here by the flank forward, waiting for support. It's Orrell there, and he plays the old one-two here, with Sean Hansen, he's up outside him to just get to the corner. What we want to see here is the good work coming from Bidgood, in fact. It's Ring who gets the ball first. He gets unusually into a bit of a muddle here. He gets caught, but look away, the Bidgood recovers the ball. Brown in support, who runs wide now from, from the defence and then straightens up. There he straightens up, looks for support, gets it from Oral for the first time in the movement. Good pass to Hansen. Hansen comes in, but let's look at Oral again. Gets back in support, not very much room to manoeuvre, but gets in for the try. That score by Keith Orrell has certainly inspired the Pontypool supporters, of whom there are quite a few here this afternoon, to increase the volume of their support. But it's Amberava now who are trying to get back into it. Apollo again going back on the Amberavan side. Is it? Yes. But Derek Bevan has called them in field. Four scrum, in fact, two Aberavon. Time almost running out now in this first half for Aberavon as again the pack comes under enormous pressure there from Pontypool. Still driven back. The pickup there is by Bishop. John Williams three, trying to get the ball back. Does so via Carter to ring. Rings kick, going in field, forcing Stephen Jones, though, to turn. Time, though, to go onto his left foot and to get a good kick there into touch. So the line out forming then just a few metres, just a couple of metres, in fact, inside the Amber Oven half. Steve Jones again goes towards Jackers in the middle, but this time the shove there coming from a Pontypool man. So the penalty, in fact, says Derek Berman. It's number five, Frank Jackers. So the penalty then goes to Aberavan. Mike Lewis looking now then for a position down around the Pontypool 22 or even deeper, maybe. In fact, the kick just a couple of meters inside the Pontypool 22, so maybe one of the last chances of this first half for Aberavan to get their first try on the board. Skipper Steve Jones making sure that his men know exactly where it's going, but it's what's in there on this occasion for Aberavan before the ball finally comes back on the Pontypool side to Bishop. But in fact, there had been a nudge forward. So this will be a scrum then to the Wizards. And that's a good position, as you see. A chance for them, maybe, to get something on the board here. Their scrum, though, has come under enormous pressure from this Pontypool 8 so far in this first half. Stuff Jones hacking the ball away from that scrum. And let's have a look, in fact, to see what happened here. Quite a tussle there between Staff Jones and Richardson before finally, yes, it's O'Callaghan, Chris O'Callaghan, the number six, who throws the punch. Steve Jones's ball tapped back on the Abravan side. But Abravan driven back. Before finally, Derek Bevan has to call a halt. The ball having gone forward. In fact, it, though, it's half time. So at half-time, the visitors, Pontypool, lead by 10 points to six, having had the one try of the game so far, scored by Keith Orrell.
And we take a short break there. Rejoin us for the to the Talbot Athletic Ground. The visitors Pontypool leading here by 10 points to six. As it's Mike Lewis who kicks off here then for Aberavon. Good chance there. Chance for Spender Ford to get up quickly on that ball. As referee Evan gives the two sets of forwards some time to try and get this ball back before finally it does in fact come back on the Pontypool side. And Ring can kick down that touchline. That's a lovely kick. Well, with very little else to admire in the game so far, you certainly could stand back and admire the casual way which uh, Mark Ring got rid of that ball and gained some valuable ground for Ponapool. At the lineup, then, Billy James aiming again for Watts. Under pressure, though, he loses it to Ponapool. But the ball's gone forward. So a scrum then to Ponapool. Let's see if the pooler can create something here. Back row move in the first instance. Hewish and Carter involved at the moment. And back it comes again on the Pontypool side. Bishop kicking for the corner, drilling it down there, and finding a superb touch. But that was beautifully done then by Pontypool. Carter and Hewish, first of all, grabbing the ball, holding it, making sure that it would come back to Bishop. Bishop having the time, looking for his position and getting a beautiful kick deep into the Aberavon corner. Quite a match of family tongues, this, with Anthony Jones. We've mentioned the brother of Robert, the two O'Callaghan brothers in the back row for Aberavon. And also two sons of famous fathers, Gary Richardson three, the son of team manager John, and also on the subs bench, Gareth Thomas, the son of Dave Thomas, that great old stalwart centre and wing. Mark Brown, though, wins that ball for Pontypool, and a chance on this blind side for Hewish now then. Really, despite not being very tall, he really is so powerful, so strong. Ring. In on the burst, there comes Roger Bidgood. We haven't seen very much of him so far in this game. Pontypool have the ball again. Ring to Oro. Oro to Hansen, but unable to take the ball, but a beautiful pickup there by Mark Ring. Ring kicking towards the corner. Getting over, but in fact, just in touch on that far side of the field, but superb play by the Pontypool outside half. This is really some beautiful skill coming up soon after this move from uh, Mark. You look at that pick up there. He hasn't got much room to move. Devin is inside, a little kick ahead, but the ball has gone forward and the scrum has been called. Staff Jones, though, goes driving on for Pontypool. Chance for them again here. Bishop going blind, putting that little kick down there for Hansen. Not such a good one, though, that time, and the ball breaking there for Abraven. And Ponderpool looking at the moment to have some movement to their play, which has been so absent so far in the game. So let's see then if Ponderpool can capitalize on this position deep inside the Abraven 22. Bishop out immediately to ring. Dummies all the way across before putting in that kick there for Alan Glasson. He can put pressure now then on Wilkins. And get the touchdown. And so the first try then of his new career here at Pontypool for their new right winger, Alan Glasson. Created again by Mark Ring. Here we see him dummying both centres before putting in a lovely hanging kick that really put pressure on left winger William Wilkins here of Aberavon. Glasson coming up at speed and the Wales B-man getting the touchdown. Let's see how the try comes then. It's Bishop first with the ball. Lovely pass out here to Ring. Let's see what happens with Ring. A couple of dummy scissors here. One, two. He runs out of players and then this high, lovely chip ahead just behind Wilkins who's got his back to, to the ball, really, and it's Glasson running onto it and it's he who gets the try. That try by Glasson again unconverted, but Pontypool have now extended their lead to eight points. Anthony Jones then, into that scrum. Again, Aberavon under pressure, but the ball back to Mike Lewis. And Gary Matthews, that long pass there to Jones, coming up with some pace there from fullback. Now going for the gap. Nice play here by Aberavon. Andrew Jones kicking down the line there, trying to get there first, but it's in fact on a back. But really that move did deserve something, didn't it? It really comes from a very unpromising position for Aberavon. In fact, look at the way uh, Ponapool disrupted their scrum. It's out to Lewis, out to Matthews. Now Matthews seems to have plenty of time in midfield there. What's he going to do? It's a long pass out into the open space for Jones. 
Jones, in fact, very nearly gets tackled, but gets away. He looks now for support. He gets it with Jones on the outside with all three Punapur men converging. It's a grubber kick to the line. It's a good one, in fact, well-judged one, but it's Hansen who gets the touchdown. And it's Abaravan who get it again, Billy James. Number six, Chris O'Callaghan was in there also, and it's back on the Abaravan side. Lewis goes for the drop goal, and it's there. So Mike Lewis then brings Abaravan back into it. It's now 49. Abaravan doing so well then in the first instance by taking that ball against the head, so to speak. Billy James then straining it up with support from Chris O'Callaghan. And when the ball reaches Mike Lewis, he has plenty of time to pop over the drop goal right between the posts. And Ponapool, it seems, losing their centre, Keith Orrell, having to leave the field. Yes, indeed, and Ponapool fortunate to have in Chris Bowart a centre who will be able to replace him. That ball, though, taken there by Abaravan. Mike Lewis taking that low ball very safely and uh, a nice kick there, taking his side up to up, up to halfway. Here, Chris Bowart, the replacement for Pontepool, a centre for another centre. Steve Jones going again towards Jackers. Ring this time, kicking deep. And his back goes Wilkins to try and keep the ball in play, but unable to do so. Another fine kick there by the Pontepool outside half. Really has kicked beautifully out of his hands. James again going towards Watts. He's had quite a tussle with Jackus, and Jackus again won that ball. As Pontepool now then look to get it back. Here it comes to Glasson. A chance again for this man to run. Tackled on this occasion, though, by Wilkins, but again, Pontepool are there in numbers. Chris Hewish again. Ring this time, going for the drop goal. But that one wide of the post, and maybe a chance lost there for Pontepool. Really high ball again there by Mike Lewis, but it's back on the Pontypool side. They can again keep up the pressure. Ball bobbing about untidily before Aberavan try to tidy it up, but in fact not getting enough of an advantage there, says referee Derek Bevan, so he's awarded them the scrum. And Abaravan in turn also losing at centre, it would seem. It's in fact John Jardine who's having to leave the field. And he's been replaced here by Gareth, by Gareth Thomas. Again, it's Watts, two-handed this time, taking that ball for Abaravan. And they're holding possession as they can now go driving on. Getting good support here from the crowd as they try to create a platform here. Bonapool type tactics, this by Abaravan. As they now try and get the ball back, under pressure though. But the collapse there has resulted in a penalty for Abravan Pontepool, as Derek Bevan illustrates, bringing that mole down. So a chance then, now then, for Mike Lewis. His third attempt now in the last few minutes, and a chance surely this to bring his side to within two points of Pontepool. Here's the view then from behind the posts as Mike Lewis tries to add to his 193 points total this season. And he's done so successfully this time. So we've got quite a match in our hands now then, with Pontypool leading by just two points.
Ponfu using Goody and Jackus to good effect there. Ring puts up the high kick. The challenge on him was by Gerald Williams, and it was a late one. So it's a penalty then to Pontypool. Well, here's the incident, and I'm not so uh, certain myself whether uh, this is the late charge. The man has committed himself to the tackle before the kick comes. Successful kick, though, by Mark Ring and has further extended Pontypool's lead. They're back in, in the lead again, then, by five points at 17-12. Lose his kick again hanging nicely there for his side and in fact it has allowed John O'Callaghan to set it up back comes the ball on the wizard side to Lewis to Matthews going for the outside gap getting there beautifully out there to Andrew Jones to the kick throw for Thomas to chase but Hansen is back for Pontefool that's some nice play again in center field here by Abraven and let's look at this movement once more from Abravan. There's a terrific drive that follows from here by Abravan. All the forwards get in there, but the crucial fact is that when they are stopped, the ball comes back beautifully. All the forwards there moving forward, the ball returns. It's a move that deserved better here. Let's look at this break by Matthews. It's a half break there, it goes beyond the, the defense of Pontepool and a kick ahead there to the corner, but it's Pontepool coming back in defense who wins the touchdown. It's Pontepool, though, will have the foot in here through Steve Jones, their skipper. Going there towards Goody, but it comes back on the Abraven side again. John O'Callaghan going to the blind side. Ball still alive on the Abraven side as they drive on now towards the line. Only James the Hooker is in there. They're driving on beautifully. O'Callaghan and Hansen involved in a little brawl before finally the referee's whistle goes. And it is a good second half from the Abraven forwards, in fact. In the first half, they look to be a beaten side, particularly in the scrum, where Pontypool shoved them back time and time again, yet they seem to be in those malls to be having the better of it. So let's see what they can make from here. It comes out to Lewis. Dummies Gary Matthews. Stephen Jones in, in there from fullback, but superbly tackled by Chris Hewish. But the ball's still alive on the Abraven side. It's Gary Matthews, number 12, the centre, trying to set it up again. Back it comes again from Billy James to Mike Lewis. Goes for the gap himself. Taken down, though, there by Ring. And the ball ending up in Ponapool hands through number eight, Alan Carter. Carter, the last man up. Going back then to his number eight position. Ring this time taking no chances. Long kick, but he has been unable to find touch and a chance now then for the counter attack. That ball had not gone forward, says the referee. Wilkins allowed to continue, but finally the ball anyway breaking for Pontepool and for Mark Brown. And finally, in fact, it is Abaravan who are penalised. And Abaravan losing now their key man outside half, Mike Lewis. What looks to be an elbow injury. Mike Lewis is replaced by Paul Morgan. So here comes Paul Morgan then onto the field, and we'll wait to see how Abaravan line up. Glasson and OK again. It's Brown in there for Pontypool, the number seven, driving on a very high tackle indeed by Stephen Jones, but Pontypool might make them pay for that. Great chance here for John Williams, just short of the line. Just, just a metre or so short, but here's the try. And that's as easy a try, certainly, as Pontypool and Roger Bidgood will score all season.
First of all, it was Mark Brown who set it up. When the ball bobbled back here, it was Brown, the number seven, on the Ponapool side, charging through possibly there from an offside position. But a good run by him, a very high tack tackle indeed on him by Stephen Jones. The drive in the first instance then by Goody. Support from number three coming up, John Williams. He was held up just short of the line. But Pontypool, as ever, finally made the ball available. Here we see it coming back. And Bidgood just has to dive over. This is another wonderful move from Pontypool. They really are res irresistible when they are on the move as they are here. It's the ball that comes back really on the Aberavon side. It's Brown, first of all, hefty tackle there. But look at the numbers here, and the ball is always made available. Goody first, drives, the ball comes back. Carter, another drive. Williams there behind him, another drive to the line. And all Pontypool now are behind him to forge towards the line. Jackus Rend really struggling, nearly gets over. But yet again, as always with Pontypool, the ball comes back on their side Bishop first out to bid good and the Mbrue is clear for the try Mark Ring failed to convert that try but Pontypool's lead is now nine points Andrew Jones then with that restart taken though by Brown and Aberon penalized hands in there so Derek Bevan Awarding the penalty to Pontypool. And another huge kick there by Bishop. Finding touch. And a long kick by the Pontypool scrum half. And the line out has to take place. So the line out then going to Pontypool. Steve Jones with the options of Richard Goody, Frank Jackus, his two locks, and also Carter and Brown at the back. Goes to Jackus, takes it beautifully, two-handed. Hewish again in there trying to support, as is number three, John Williams. It's Hewish, though, with the ball. Under pressure from Chris O'Callaghan, but gets the ball back once more. Ring, Paul Rees coming up in support from fullback again, but it's Billy James who intercepts for Abravan. Back again on the Abravan side, but Goody through in an offside position for Pontypool, so the penalty then to the home team. And with time running out at the end of this game, just a couple of minutes to go, they have to try something. Billy James it is who drives on. Pontypool not back 10 meters though. So again, Billy James takes it quickly to himself. Looking now for support from teammates. Here they arrive. Good play here by the Wizards pack as they drive in and look to make the ball available. Back it comes, Anthony Jones. John Callahan eight trying to get in there as well as Jones tries to rip that ball back. Finally, though, referee Bevan has to blow his whistle. Here is an example of uh, Aberavon here. Beautiful ball from uh, Billy James there, given to Nigel Spender. He drives, but look at the way Aberavon collectively get all there together and the way the ball is laid back there for Anthony Jones. And it is that ball that is so important couple of minutes then into injury time at the end of this game and as Billy James prepares to throw in for Aberavon who really made a fight of it in the second half and in fact they're gonna have one more chance a penalty awarded against Pontypool so Aberavon sure to run it from here the ball though in the hands of Stephen Jones and deciding strangely to go for touch really not much time left, but he finds a good touch deep inside the Pontypool 22. And in fact, that was the last bit of action in this game. Referee Derek Bevan's whistle goes at the end of this match. Pontypool, the victors then by 21 points to 12.